Hi, I'm Adil. Today I'm going to show you how to transform a Confluence wiki, this, into a powerful linchpin intranet. All right, let's start. For today, I prepared a blank Confluence site. There are no apps installed at all. We only have some content, meaning we have some spaces and we have some pages and blog posts, which we are going to use later on. To transform the Confluence wiki into a linchpin intranet, we need to install the linchpin intranet suite app. For that, we need to access the Confluence administration, authenticate yourself again, head to the um, find new apps section and search for the linchpin intranet suite. Click on free trial, accept the terms of use. And now we just wait until the linchpin intranet suite is installed. After the Lunchbin app is installed, we need to apply a license. For that, we just click on Get License, and then we will be redirected to the Atlassian Marketplace. This is where I check out the box that I'm accepting the terms of use, generate the license, and apply it. After this is done, you will get this message that it's installed. I'm just going ahead and close it now. We will notice that the logo of the site has changed. If I click on it and go back to my dashboard, I would see that there is no difference on the dashboard. This is because we have to do an extra step, meaning we have to enable the theme to see the impact of the installation. For that, we are going back to the Confluence administration, search for look and feel, click on themes and enable the linchpin theme. We confirm, and when we get back to the dashboard, we will see our updated linchpin theme. This is where we will be starting and start configuring the theme to match your corporate design. Here we begin to customize the theme. In order to do that, we click on the cock icon right here and look for theme. As soon as we do that, we are redirected to the theme section of the Lynchpin intranet suite. So I'm going to open up a new tab with the dashboard so we can see what we are doing here actually. We start with the dashboard and this is where we get to decide which kind of dashboard we would like to have. Either the default Confluence dashboard or the Lynchpin dashboard. The default Confluence dashboard consists of this sidebar, this activity stream and uh, this welcome message. The Lynchpin dashboard, however, disables the sidebar, the activity stream, and takes care of this welcome message to be rendered through the whole width. So if I'm just selecting the Lynchpin dashboard and save, refresh the dashboard right here, we will see that the welcome message is now in full width. This is where I can now use the usual Confluence editor to put every content I like on my dashboard. So I can say, welcome to my intranet, click on save. If you're wondering why you are here under global templates and blueprints, it is because we just edited the default welcome message. So whenever we want to edit the dashboard, you will have to come back to this system template right here. Click on edit again. and make further changes as we like. So this is how our dashboard looks like now. So now I can just walk through the whole configuration and make changes as I like. I can change the default, uh, the default background color. I can also upload a background image, which you can make, which looks good in some cases, but in most um, cases, it's not good. So you will have to experiment with that. Um, for the header section, we can upload our custom logo, we can uh, position it as we like, and we can also upload a different uh, background image or set a different background color. And this is how we can just walk through like buttons and links, um, 
content elements, teasers, which we are going to look at, sidebar, footer, and also we have an advanced section, which allows you to enter custom CSS and custom JavaScript. If you have some settings, there is no GUI for that. Let's take the header, for example, which we are going to customize. I just click on the header section and I will upload a new logo, which I've already prepared on my desktop, which is right here. All I need to do is upload the file, oh, is uh, click on save here. If I refresh, you will see that we just changed the Lynchpin logo with the CBAT Media logo. Also, I'm going ahead and I will delete the background image, click on save. So now this background image will be replaced. And since you see that I can't distinguish my buttons, which are right here, I can now go to the buttons and links section and add the color right here. And if I click on refresh, we'll see that I just um, created, uh, got the Seabed Media Green right here. And as for the other buttons, which are in the header, right here we can also do that click on save refresh them again and this is where we get to see all our buttons in our customized color with this principle you can walk through the whole configuration right here and add all kind of images uh, all kind of colors you like now that we are done with that we can take a look at the navigation menu it's still, you see that I don't have any navigation menu right here. This is because I haven't created one. All I need to do is click on the cock icon again and go to the menu where I can just start with creating menu items, as you can see right here. So I can just go ahead and say, this is the menu point for Washington. Can set up a link. For example, we have a space called corporation. Then I can set another one called departments. And then I can have a different link here. Or say teams and say create team. It is important to link an existing space or page on external link. Uh, if you don't, it won't be displayed in the navigation structure. So if I click save change, save changes, it will they uh, those menu items will be saved but they won't be published in order to publish them i need to click on this button right here and if i refresh the dashboard you get to see what i what i just did now you can see that i have this navigation menu twice this is because we have to disable it within the menu settings right here i just click on disabled and if i refresh again you see that we only get one navigation menu right here. So now I can just start adding more menu points. Obviously you can create as many menu items as you like. However, I would not recommend you to go over seven menu items. After that, it just doesn't look good anymore and people will be overwhelmed in finding what they are desiring to find. This is why you should always keep it below seven Usually, I recommend to don't go over five. So you can also add different categories. So if we go back to the menu configuration again, I can just go ahead and say I want to append a subcategory item, and this category item can be called business teams. And this category can now be dragged and dropped and using the positioning arrows right here I can now structure them as I like for demonstration purposes I will just create another subcategory item and call it IT teams and then I'm going to create two more entries and we'll call it um, software and support Publish. Now they will be displayed right here 
in this flyout. You can also customize the display of this menu. Just go getting back into menu settings right here and choose the flyout menu style if you'd like to. If we open up the dashboard again, you will see the difference. You can also choose the extended flyout menu. If you refresh, you will see how it looks right here. Obviously, it's completely up to you to decide which menu style you will be using. Let's take a look at the user profiles. Every user who has an account has his own user profile, which is right here. And every user can edit his or her own user profile. I can now enter values for the default profile fields that are delivered or provided by Confluence. These are not sufficient for our internet use case, which is why we are going to create new profile fields. In order to do that, click on the cog icon here again, select user profiles and find yourself in the profile editor. This is where the default profile fields of Confluence are displayed as well. You cannot delete them because if one day you are going to uninstall the Linchpin Intranet Suite, there still have to be those default profile fields. So this is why you cannot delete them, but you can change the names. So if you don't need website right here, we just go ahead and click on the edit button. And instead of website, you can say you want a field called languages. You can enter a help text, which will be displayed next to the profile field. Which language? Select the category. We only have the default category. And then you can choose a field type. For example, you have text input, multi-line text. Select, multi-select, a lot of different options right here. As we, as this profile field is about languages, we are going to select language select, which is a library of languages. So you don't need to provide them one by one. So if I click on my user profile right now and go into the edit mode, you will see that I can now select languages I speak. Let's say I speak English and, I, and German. Click on save and now the entered values will be displayed right here. This is how I can proceed and just go ahead and edit or create new profile fields. So as for location, which is a text input field right now. We are going to change that and say it's a select field and then add options, either Frankfurt or Washington. Click on save. And if I edit my profile again, you get to see that I can now choose between Washington or Frankfurt. As for position, I can now enter that I'm an Atlassian consultant and click on save. What you can do with Lynchpin user profile is you can select one specific value as, as a special field, which will be uh, displayed beneath your name right here. All you need to do for that is select this field and move it to the top of the contact area. So if I refresh my profile page again, you will see that my position is now below my name. So now we are going to edit the category and say this category is about, it's called about me, click on save. So now instead of default, you will be having about me. And I can also create a new category, which is called expertise. Click on save, which is now right here. So now I can, for example, drag and drop already existing profile fields, such as languages, but I can also create a new profile field. For example, Atlassian tools, select the multi-select option field. And then I can add my options here again, or I can go ahead and say, I'm an expert in Bitbucket, 
Confluence, or Jira. Click on Save. And if I edit my profile again, you see that I have a new profile feed right here where I can say that I'm an expert in Confluence and Jira. Within the layout section of the profile editor, you can also move the categories to be displayed in different areas within your profile. By just dragging and dropping them, you can switch the position of all profile categories, including their respective profile fields. For every profile field, you get to specify the field type. So you can say, I have, you want a text field, a select field, multi-select field, but you can also get this information directly from your LDAP. All you need to do for that is select the field type retrieved from LDAP and then enter the LDAP attribute right here. Obviously, what you need to do before is connect your user directory to the Confluence site. You will find more information about this in the description below. The cool thing about the user profiles is that it comes with a bunch of macros you can use on your Confluence pages. So if I'm going to access a random page, for example, in the marketing dashboard right here, I can just click on edit and enter a new macro called profile, which is right here. So this is why I can just enter a username, for example, P Winter. Click on insert. And if I update this page, you will see that I have the V card from Pamela Winter. I can enter this macro as much as I want. You can just copy it and edit the value, which would be, for example, mine right here. Click on save, update, and then you will see that Pamela and I are your contacts within the marketing space right here. Obviously, Pamela has her own user profile, which is blank right now because she didn't provide any values. So all you need to do to change that is the log out, authenticate yourself with this user, Click on profile, edit it, and provide some value. So first, I'm going to change this into English and click on save. And also say that she's an expert in Confluence and she speaks French. She's also HR, no, let's say she's the marketing manager. Just click on save. And using her user profile, I can also search for users here. So I can just enter my name and then my profile will come up, but I can also search for values. For example, show me everyone who works in Washington, which would be both me and Pamela. But I can also search for other values. For example, show me an expert in Confluence. And then again, both of us will appear right here. You can customize the display of the profile feeds right here by going to the, to the theming section. In order to do that, you need Confluence administration privileges, which Pamela doesn't have. So I'm just going to log out. Authenticate with my username again. Go to the theme section. Go to the Lunchpin sidebar and configure the expert search right here. So this is, I can now say, I want the location no, I want to be displayed following profile fields, the location and the Atlassian tools 
right here. Just click on save. So if I open up my sidebar right here again and search for Washington, you get to see that now I'm also going to display the location and the tools. Obviously we can customize that furthermore. Going back to the theming section, clicking on the linchpin sidebar, configure expert search again. We can also enter filters, for example, languages, click on save, update this again. Go into the dashboard, search for contacts and saying, I need an expert in Confluence. No, both of us appear again right here, but then you can say, you want someone who speaks French and then Pamela Winter's profile will show up. So if I click on her profile, I get to see that she's an expert in Confluence who speaks French. So now I can add her to my contacts, which is why she will be listed right here. Aside from that, you can also create other macros. Let us just delete displays and say, create a content called everyone from Washington. For that, I'm going to use a macro called customized user list, where I can enter a value for a specific profile field, for example, location, and just search for Washington. Click on insert. And now I have this macro on this page. If I click on update, you will see that here is a list of every person who stated to work in Washington. If I edit this page again by clicking on edit, I can also change the display options. For example, I can say you also want the, the department to be displayed right here and the Atlassian tools again click on update and this is where now the department would be provided and the Atlassian tools. The cool thing about this macro is that it is updated dynamically. So as you see, there is no value in the department column right here. But if I go to my user profile and change that and say, I work in marketing, click on save and then go back to my marketing dashboard, you will see that the value is now displayed right here. It's a very handy macro you can use to display phone directories or user directories for that matter. Now that we have configured the user profiles, we get to use my favorite feature, personalization. Let me just give you an example. You see, for example, in the navigation menu that we have three menu items, Washington, departments and teams. If we check out our user profiles, we will see that when I edit the profile that I get to choose between two locations between Washington and Frankfurt. So if I click on Frankfurt right here, I click on save, you see that I still get displayed the Washington menu item. We can change that by adding a personalization feature to the navigation menu. In order to do that, we just need to go to the menu configuration by clicking on the cog icon. On the second tab, you will find the personalization feature. And this is where you get to choose profile fields, which we just configure. So now you will see the Atlassian tools, department, languages, location, what, and whatever other profile fields you just created. So I'm just going to use the location profile field. You can choose up to three profile fields for that, but I only will use the location field. Click on save. And if I go back to my menu structure, you will see that I just added a new column right here. So this is why I can go ahead and say, the Washington menu item should only be displayed if a user has stated to work in the Washington location. So just, just click on publish menu. And if I go back to my dashboard, you will see that I only see departments and teams the Washington menu item disappeared. Let us just let me just check my profile real quick. This is where we'll see 
that I have started to work in Frankfurt. This is why I don't see the Washington menu item. So if I'm going to change that again and say I work in Washington, click on save, the Washington menu item will appear. Why doesn't a corresponding menu item appear for Frankfurt? Well, this is why this is because we don't have a menu item for the Frankfurt location. If you want to do that, we just click on add menu main menu item, enter Frankfurt, link space, and enter Frankfurt right here. As soon as I publish the menu, you will see I still get to see the Washington menu item. If I'm going to my user profile and change the value here, click on Frankfurt, you will see that I am displayed my Frankfurt menu item right here. Instead of being at, uh, the first menu item to be listed in my navigation menu right here, it's the last one. This is because I haven't configured the order of the menu items. So if I want it to be displayed above, I can just drag and drop it just below Washington or above it for that matter. So if I publish the menu again, it will be here at the beginning of the navigation menu. Let us bring up some news onto our dashboard. In order to do that, we just click on the edit button right here. So we can edit the welcome message. We will just erase everything on the left side and embed the cover stories macro, which displays all the blog posts in a tile layout. For now, I'm just going to skip the configuration so we see what we just done. Click on save, access the dashboard again, and then you see all blog posts you have within Confluence. So if I click on one blog post, you will just see it's a um, normal Confluence editor. And you can see that we are within the blog post section of the space. And obviously all blog posts here are the same. So I can just put up this blog post, click on edit, and you will see that I have again my Confluence editor with the exception that I get to see a new panel just above the editor, which you can use for the news management. Just to walk you through real quick, you can set up a custom publication period. So when to publish a new blog post or to uh, archive it, you can also highlight news by making them sticky or pin them on the dashboard. You can also enter categories, which we don't have yet. We are going to look, at this, look into that in a second. We can enter additional content such as a kicker. So, um, this is a kicker. And this is my intro text. And also I can set up news teaser, teaser options. I can select from these four options. I can also select like an image and I will choose this one, click on choose, save additional information, click on update. And if I open up my dashboard again, you will see that I just edited the image. So I can just go ahead and make those changes to every blog post, which is displayed on the dashboard. If you embed the cover stories macro without doing any configuration there, all blog posts that are available within Confluence will be displayed on the dashboard. Obviously, you can change that by customizing the configuration of the cover stories macro. By clicking on edit, you get to choose a source for every new style you see right here. You can say, for example, only news from corporation should be displayed for the first three tiles and on the fourth tile you say only marketing news will be displayed. If I click on insert and save you will now see that the first three blog posts are all from the space corporation and the fourth blog post is within marketing. 
Now every user who logs into this site will see the same blog post here. Obviously, you can also personalize the news people get to see. For that, we need to go into the administration of the news module. By clicking on the cog icon, select news. We start by clicking on the first tab, personalization, and select our location profile feed again. Then we go to sections and add a new section called location-based news. Click on OK. This is where I get to say, if someone works in Washington, please display only blog post from the space Washington. If someone works in Frankfurt, please display only news from the Frankfurt space. Click on Save News Sections and then we just open up our dashboard again. So let's just say that the fourth tile here should always display the personalized news. So if I work in Washington, I want to see the Washington-based news. And if I work in Frankfurt, I want to see the news that are specifically designed to display for all employees who work in Frankfurt. In order to do that, we just change the configuration of the cover stories macro again by clicking on edit. And instead of using space label combination, we are going to use the news section option. And since I only have one new section, I can say I want location based news, click on apply and insert and save. Going back to the dashboard, we will see the news post in German for the Frankfurt location. You can also see that by checking by comp or comparing the menu item right here. So I'm in Frankfurt, it is displayed in the menu in the navigation menu. And I also see the news post for the Frankfurt location. If I open up my user profile, you will see that I stated to work in Frankfurt. So if I'm going to change that and say, I work in Washington, open up the dashboard again, you will see that I have a different blog post right here. So this is how you can target specific information to specific user groups. Obviously, using the location fields in the user profiles is just an example. You get to choose which profile field you, you want to use for personalization. It can be position, it can be team, but it can also be something as your shoe size if you'd like to. If you would rather prefer a list view of your blog post, you can also use the corporate news feed. Just go to the edit section again and select the corporate news feed right here. If we take a look at our dashboard now, we will see that instead of this rather prominent display of news, we get to see a more comprised list view of our news. Obviously, you can also apply the same settings for the personalization as for the cover stories. Usually, the newest blog posts are displayed on the dashboard. If you want to see the older blog posts, you get to access them through the news hub. Just click on this compass icon in the header and select the news hub. And this is where you see all blog posts you have the permission to view. For every blog post you create, you can also add news categories. In order to do that, you will have to set up your own custom library. You do that by clicking on the cog icon and going to the configuration of the news. There you click on categories and then just enter some categories. For example, work-life balance, KPIs, announcements, or fun for that matter. So if you click on a blog post now, edit it, you can also assign categories to this blog post. For example, fun and announcement. Save the additional information, update the blog post. If you go back to the dashboard, you will see the categories displayed right here. If you click on a category, you will be displayed all news that were assigned this specific category. Let's take a look at some events. We will start at the event hub. You can access by clicking on the compass icon. 
venue will be forwarded to the event hub, which will be empty. We will start by creating one event, which we will be calling town hall meeting, set a start date, 13th of October, from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., select the space, add an event image. You can also crop the area of the image you want to display, apply it. On the right side, you get to see a preview of all the changes you are doing. You can also enter a location, for example, lobby, and provide a short description. Just click on save, and then you will see the event that I just created. I can sign myself in. I can also see the participant list, which would also only be me by now, but I can also add new participants, for example, Pamela Winter, add her. I now signed her in, but obviously she can sign herself out if she prefers to. Click on close. I can always edit the event, for example, add event categories, same as we did for news categories. Since there are no event categories, we cannot enter them right here. I can select an event page if I'd like to, to provide a detailed agenda. I can set a maximum number of participants, for example, 10 people. I can also choose to hide the participants or make changes to the sign up options right here. This way, you can create as many events as you like. If you want to add event categories, you can just go to the events section within the administration. This is where you enter new categories, for example, training, party, meeting. By doing that, you can again edit the event and select appropriate categories for that. After creating those categories, you can assign them to your events so you can filter them by clicking on the corresponding categories in the sidebar on the left. If you want to display your events on a dashboard, you can do so by embedding a macro. Just go to back to your dashboard, click on the edit button, add a quick headline and choose from the event calendar or event list. If I embed the event list macro and click on save, you see all events are displayed in list view next to your cover stories on the left. If you rather prefer the calendar view, you choose the event calendar macro. To facilitate communication within your intranet, you can also use the microblog. In order to set up a microblog, you just go to the microblog hub by clicking on the compass and choosing microblog. Right now, we cannot create any microblog posts because it's not configured yet. In order to do that, we need to access the administration and select a space as every microblock timeline is connected to a confluence space. So I will just choose the space corporation and select the topic random, create another topic called training and another one called office announcements and click on save. If I access the micro block again, I get to see that I have now the possibility to create a micro block post and select a topic to post it to. Now all users can interact with my microblog post 
by liking them or replying to it. By posting more and more messages, our timeline continues to grow. You can also create different microblogs based on different spaces. For example, the marketing team, which has their own marketing space, can have their own designated microblog, which is only available for them by changing the permissions to access the microblog. You can also embed the microblog timeline on the dashboard by using a macro. I will just add a new section below here and say micro block. Then I will choose the micro block timeline macro, insert it and click on save. When I do that, I get to see all my micro posts on my dashboard right here. By the way, if you need anything to fill out this blank area on the right side, it's always good to use the Linchpin teaser macros to display important links. For that, we just go ahead and choose the teaser macro right here. You get to choose from different colors, which you can set up in the Linchpin theme and say, this is training documents, choose an icon, a URL, for example, onboarding, click on insert, save. Now we get to display it, the training documents in a fancy teaser box. Even though we haven't specifically talked about the sidebar, we already took a look at it. So on the right side, you get to see the pages you saved for later, meaning your favorite pages, your contacts with the expert search, and also the launchpad or your apps. There are no apps yet, so this is why the launchpad hub is blank, but we can visit the administration to create apps. By just clicking on that, we get to create a new app an app which was a uh, web link to one of the tools you're using. For example, you can add Amazon, select the URL, amazon.com for shopping, browse and select an icon. You can enter a contact so users know who to reach out to if they have any questions. And you can also set labels and categories, which we haven't done, but it's the same principle as with the news and the events. You can select options for the visi visibility on the launchpad. So do you want to offer the app for all users or do we want to use personalization features again? For now, I'm just going ahead and creating it and see what we just did right here. If I open up my dashboard again and open up launchpad accessing the hub I see that I have only one app called Amazon if I subscribe to it by clicking on the star it will be displayed in my sidebar on the right side now we can go ahead and create more apps after creating your own personal link library you can review all your apps in your launchpad by clicking on the compass again and opening up the hub. This is where users can now subscribe to their apps on an individual basis, which will then be displayed on the sidebar here on the right. Obviously, you can also use the personalization features, meaning you can display specific apps to specific user groups only. So all the IT apps for backups, monitoring are only displayed for people who work in IT. But you can also make apps mandatory, meaning, for example, the time tracking app is displayed for everyone and nobody gets to unsubscribe from that. Last but not least, accessing your intranet from your mobile device. For that, you can download the Linchpin mobile app on your Apple App Store or if you're using an Android phone 
on the Google Play Store. If you have done that, you get to open up the Linchpin mobile app, which you can test without login or choose to log in. You can now provide the address of your Linchpin site, or you can just go ahead to your profile and select item mobile access. Here, you can generate a QR code, which you will be able to scan. So it walks you through this process right here again. And as soon as I scan my app, I get to enter my password, click on next, enter a name, click on finish, and then I'm able to access the news we just saw on our dashboard. Aside from that, we can also take a look at the microblog and see the exact same post we see on the desktop version as well. We can also browse the contacts. We can view blog posts, pages, and available spaces. And you can also set up general settings. For example, you can enable face and fingerprint recognition so users always have to uh, provide a pin or authenticate themselves by using uh, fingerprint or face recognition before being able to open up the Linchpin mobile app. If your Linchpin site is only available behind the firewall, meaning you have to establish a VPN connection first to access the content, you can also enable Firescope, a secure gateway server hosted by Seabird Media, allowing you to access your content from your Linchpin site even though it's behind the firewall, making it not required for your users to establish a VPN connection first. In order to do that, just click on the Confluence icon, go to General Configuration, search for Linchpin Mobile Connection Settings, choose the Seabed Media Hosted Gateway Service, click on Connect, Confirm, And just as easy as that, all your users can now access the content from your Linchpin site, even though it's behind the firewall. If you want to learn more about the security concept, please click on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching this quick and straightforward do-it-yourself guide to install the Linchpin intranet suite yourself. Obviously, there are many more features we didn't cover in this video. For that, you can review our documentation. The link is in the description below. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We are here to help you. Thank you.